So while I had my video stuff up and running, I thought that I would make a video that could show what the actual numbers are on the EQs. Uh, so the graphic EQ already has numbers on it. Here's the parametric EQ. This one makes me mad because we've got, what is this, percent? There's no such thing as percent in EQ. But this way we can actually look at the analysis. I've got some uh, white noise going on where it's signal at every frequency, so we can look on this spectrum analyzer to see what the EQ is actually doing. So let's first try boosting the lows. Okay, interesting. Looks like a low shelving filter that uh, goes up at around 200 hertz. It's a useful spot for guitar. And at 50, it's flat. Highs, looks like it boosts right around 2K, 1.5 to 2 kilohertz. And down. Here's frequency, Q, and gain. I'm assuming this is the parametric part. So these two are shelving EQs and this is a parametric filter. So let's let's leave this at 50. Let's also leave the Q, how's this, percent. Okay, let's leave the Q in the middle. Let's go up with the gain. Oh, the gain is even in percent. That's annoying. Looks like about 12, I'm guessing, dB of gain. And dipping down, that looks like more, I think. 5, 10, about 15, not sure. But that's what the range is looking like to me. Let's boost this again and uh, change the Q. Okay, at its narrowest, this is roughly a one octave Q. And at its widest, this is very wide spectrum. All right. So now let's figure out these frequencies. Well, 50% is one kilohertz. In fact, let's narrow the Q so that we can see it more easily. Oh, it looks like just a hair shy of one kilohertz, actually, at 50%. Maybe, let's say, 800 or 900 or so. At zero, we've got, looks like, around 50-ish. 10% looks like 100. 20%, uh, just shy of 200. 30% is about 350. 40% is just over 500, so 600 or so. 50%, again, just shy of 1K. 60% is about 1.5 kilohertz, 1.4. 70 is right about 2 kilohertz, maybe 2050 or so. 80, looks like about 3K, 90, about f 4, and 100% is just shy of 5K. So there's, there's your frequency from 100% all the way down to 0%. And that's the parametric EQ. Let's try another one. Let's look at the studio EQ. Uh, that doesn't look like it needs this. Four band shift EQ. Hmm. Interesting. I don't actually know what this one does exactly, so let's let's try some stuff. Now that's that looks like a uh, a peak EQ or a dip, and not a shelving filter. Yeah. Anyway, that's the low frequency. Oh, sure, they measure this in decibels. That's weird. Low mid, that's around 200 or so. High mid, very broad, centered around 1K or so. High... That's also not a shelving EQ. That is a peak and dip filter. All right, let's see what shift does. Probably nothing. Yep, it interacts with the other control. So let's try. Oh, I bet I know what this does. Let's boost low, dip low mid, and increase high mid and decrease high. So we get a characteristic shape here. Shift. Hmm. Strange. 
Okay, let's try this again. Here's a boost on the low mids, and let's shift. Now, shifting upwards made the low mids go down, and shifting downwards makes them go up. It's about a one octave shift between 100 and 200 hertz, except when the shift is down, low mid is at 200, and when it's up, it goes down to 100. That's very strange. Let's see what it does to the low frequency. Okay, so right now it looks like it's around 60-ish with shift up at the highest point. When we move it down to the lowest point, now it's way up at 120 or so. So far, with the low and low mids, it's looking like the shift is backwards from what you would expect. When it's at the low end, it shifts it to the higher octave, and up here it shifts it to the lower octave. Let's check the high mid section. This is a very broad band, but it's centered eh, between 500 and 1K at this point in shift. Let's move shift all the way up. Oh, no, that's interesting. This one is lower when shift is down and higher when shift is up. So this is centered on 1.5K or so, and down here, maybe 500 or so. That's different. And now the high... Looks like a boost centered around 3 to 4 kilohertz. Let's move shift all the way up. That shifts it upwards, so we've got this around 8k or so. Now that's pretty bizarre, because let's say we boost both the high and low. When we move this shift, these ought to move closer together. Yeah. Very strange. But that's the 4-band shift EQ. Mid-focus EQ. Boy, that is a mid-focus, isn't it? Okay, looks like we've got high-pass frequency, high-pass Q, low-pass frequency, and low-pass Q. Okay, so in a high-pass or low-pass filter, Q is going to refer to the slope. Or, oh, okay, resonance. you got a resonant peak up there. All right, so let's set these two... Oops, wrong things. Let's make this as broadband as possible. Mm. And turn down the gain a bit. Okay, so here's some settings if you want the mid-focus EQ to be transparent. But now the high pass. There we go. Oh yeah, this is going to be tricky to find. Okay, here's a trick. I'm going to set the Q to maximum so that it has a resonant peak and we'll be able to identify where that is. Okay, so with the high pass frequency at 10%, it looks like it's at about uh, 80 or so. At 20%, it looks like we've got 120. 30 looks like maybe 170 or so. 40, just above 200. 50, probably around 300 or so, 60, 350, 70, get up to 500 at about 90, and at 100 we're just over 500 hertz. Okay, so there's the high pass frequency. Low pass, well, it looks like it's way up near 20K at 100%. And as we go down, well, look at that. To zero, it's at 500. Okay. So 500, as we're passing 24%, that's 1K. 50%, that's 2K. Interesting. 75% looks like about 8K all the way up to nearly 20K at 100%. Vintage Pre, does this have anything? High pass filter and low pass. Oh, those are actually labeled in Hertz. Okay, so there's the EQs. 